Teacher paperwork is so overwhelming. And even in the digital age, it is amazing how much paper goes through a teacher's hands. So what's the best way to stay organized with all this paper? Well, stick around because I'm sharing my best tips to manage the paper flow. Welcome back to my channel. I'm Rachel Vincent and I share tips on how to run an effective and efficient classroom so that you can thrive as a teacher. The number one piece of advice I could give you for managing your paperwork is to have a place for everything. Whether it's permission slips or classwork or papers from the office, everything needs to have a place. Otherwise, it just ends up in stacks on your desk. You want to find a system that works for you. You can use binders, you can use a filing cabinet, you can use drawers. I've tried many systems, but I've always come back to using drawers. I personally like it because it hides the visual clutter and you can't see all the stacks and stacks. I like it's easy to access. I can drop something in there and go. I don't have to think about filing something and it just works really well for me. There is a catch that because it's a drop and go, it is an out of sight, out of mind. So if it's something that I need to remember and not forget about, I actually have these folder file holders on my wall above my teacher desk that I put things that I need to access daily. The paper needs for me have changed every single year. And so I continually change the labels that I have on my drawers because it doesn't work from year to year. One year it works great and this is what I needed. The following year I don't need that drawer anymore so I just continue to change it up. Keep changing until you find what works for you. So let's talk about the biggest component of paper flow and that is typically the flow of paper through lessons and your students. So it starts in stage one when you are lesson planning. A lot of the resources I use for subjects are digital. So if I need a paper product, I print it out as I'm laminating it, but I'm not running to the copy machine that same day because I batch work my planning and my copying. I need a place for that paper or those papers that I'm going to be using in my future lesson plans to go to wait until it's time to copy. So I put those in my copy drawer. Then on the day that I make my copies, I grab the papers out of there, grab my copy paper and head to the copy machine to make all of my copies. When I come back with the stacks of copies that I have for future lessons, I then sort it into subject drawers. I used to have days of the week drawers and I would sort it that way. However, I noticed in the upper grades and especially as now we are using more digital products and kids are using more digital resources that I don't have as many copies as I used to. And a lot of the copies we use last multiple days. And so the days of the week just weren't working for me anymore. So I switched it up and now sort by subject. So then when it's time to teach that lesson, I pull out the copy I need and I pass it out to the students. Now here's where one of two things can happen. Well, technically three. They're either gluing the notes or resources into a notebook or putting it in a binder if you use a binder or they are working on something that they are going to turn into me. Now, if they don't finish it, I also have a place for that to go. My students have a cubby folder because we have cubbies and not desks, but I called it a desk folder when we had desks and any unfinished work goes into that folder so that they can work on it at later parts of the day. When students are ready to turn something back into me, whether it's for me to grade or review, it goes into our turn in bin from the turn in bin. I have a student helper that organizes it and puts them all in number order. So I know who's missing, who didn't finish or who was absent. And those paper go in my two grade drawer. That way, when it's time for me to do some grading, I can pull that drawer out and grade the papers. Most of the time I had a separate drawer that was called graded. So after I finished grading it, I put it back in that drawer because I would enter all of my grades into the grade book at one time to batch that work because it was kind of a process to log into our online grade book. Now that a lot of the work my students are doing are online or in Google Classroom, I needed a way to record grades that I graded online and their paperwork. So now I put it on a grade checklist. That way I know who's turned what in, what grades they have. And so as soon as I log the grades onto this sheet, the student's work goes into the student files to be sorted and sent home. So when you're thinking about your paper flow, 
Think from the point of lesson plan and when you physically find what you're going to give your students all the way till you're sending that graded work back home. You need to find the systems that work for you that help you stay organized so you don't have stacks and stacks of paper on your desk. Papers that show up in your mailbox from the office took me a while to figure out a good system that works for them. I find that they can fall into three categories. Papers that need to go home with students, mail or catalogs, or papers that I only need to hold on to for a small amount of time. Papers that need to go home immediately to students, I go ahead as soon as I bring them into the classroom and stick them in my filing system so I know that they need to be sorted and sent home with students. Mail and catalogs that come into the classroom, I look through immediately and recycle, or like my Scholastic book orders, I have a drawer that those go in to keep until I need them. The papers that I need to hold on to a small amount of time, like maybe picture day collection forms or things like that, I will actually slide those under my desk calendar so that I know where they're at and can grab them easily. Papers for record keeping, whether they're student assessments, informational forms, permission slips, I have files in a small filing cabinet where I file those to keep for the year. Typically, those are the things that you only need to keep as long as you have the students in your classroom, and then at the end of the year, they can be shredded. There are a few things that I don't keep in drawers that I actually keep in my teacher binder. It is one of the only binders I have. And the reason for this is it is often something specific that I'm looking for, like student logins or my uh, whole class student data. And I keep that in my binder so I can specifically find it and I don't have to file through or flip through a bunch of papers that are sitting in a drawer. If you'd like to know more about how I use my teacher notebook, let me know in the comments below if that's a video you would like to see. Organizations is one of my favorite things to talk about. So let me know what is the hardest area in your classroom to keep organized and I can make a video on how I do that in my room. If you like this video, make sure you click the like button so I know to make more videos on classroom organization. And make sure you subscribe and put on this bell notification so you know when new videos are posted.